live because I can see the chat on my Zoom. No, I see the chat. No. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And welcome to Baking with a Zoom Fell. And today we're going to be making angel cake. Now, okay, I, guys, I think I, I think we're alive. Okay. <laughs> so kindly. Hi everyone. Yes. I'm a little trouble right now, I'm sorry. Okay. Welcome to this panel. And I am Sabrina from Italy. I was about to ask all of you which country were you from and what time is it? Uh, but most of you already answered the, the, that question. But if you want to keep uh, answering, we are here for you and we will glad to know. And um, I think I'm going to to have Hannah say something or Tifa say something because I completely lost uh, the main screen from uh, from our our panel. So I need like one minute. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I guess hi again, everyone. Uh, welcome to the panel. So we're going to be talking about what it's like to be part of an international fandom. Because yes, Good Omen started out as a book that was written by British authors and enjoyed by by in Britain first, but it's now really spread across the world. And the way that we enjoy fandom has gotten so much bigger because of the involvement of different people from different backgrounds. So as basis, um, I am from the Philippines. Tifa? Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Tifa. So um, I'm also from the Philippines, but I've been living in Japan for the last seven years. So um, Anna and I will take turns talking about um, the Filipino Good Omens fandom, but I will also be um, sharing um, some of my experiences in the Japanese fandom. So yeah, um, there's a lot to cover and we hope to be able to cover them all, including your questions. So yeah, we'll try our best. Okay. Okay. I think I'm coming back, but I can start to talk anyway. Um, okay. So Anna, can you please uh, start to slide our slides? Yeah. Okay, the first topic we want to talk is about language and translation. And Next, uh, next slide. <laughs> and uh, as an Italian, uh, uh, my first uh, uh, thought about uh, the old, the old topic is the the fact that uh, the <clears throat> the book uh, has been translated also in its, uh, its title, and in the Italian version, the Good Omens is not uh, translated literally, as you can see in the slide. Good Omens uh, in Ital Italian is buoni presagi that is very similar to uh, the spanish ver version that is buenos presagios uh, sorry if i spell it wrong and uh, pronounce it wrong and in italian the the title has been changed in buona apocalisse a tutti that is translate more or less like nice apocalypse to everyone and i think that i found uh, I, I found that uh, very funny because it's like a very polite way to uh, to say a thing and the Italian uh, title translation of the title have, have sort of this um, British humor vibes and you can imagine Aziraphale say something like that like oh nice apocalypse to everyone with while he's drinking tea or something like that and also we have this uh, the one you the cover you are see right now on the screen is um, the, the classic Italian uh, version of the cover. Uh, for a long time, we had just this one. And it's very funny if you look uh, close at it, there is to the angel and the demon uh, literally dancing on the earth. Probably they make a sort of uh, quote joke about dancing and it's very cute because they are uh, also hugging. So this is nice. And we have made a collection of the various covers from other countries, as you can see. Thank you, Hannah. And uh, we have the one from Holland, that's first. And I can 
read uh, Dutch, sorry. Uh, so maybe it's Ogeo Homens, I don't know. Uh, we have the um, uh, French version that is uh, the Bon Présage, I think. Sorry again for my pronunciation. Uh, we have the uh, one Russian version that is very funny because we have um, sort of uh, mob, mob Crowley and uh, uh, Aziraphale that is losing his mind completely. So it's quite funny. And uh, next slide, uh, another Italian version. And I must admit that this one is very, um, particular because I never, never see this kind, this, this cover in the bookshops, never. And uh, I always saw the original one, the first one I show you. And uh, after that, uh, after the TV show, uh, as usually happened in Italy, we had uh, uh, a new edition with uh, the one of the poster of the TV show, the one with the tree and the both of them sitting. Uh, under the tree. So this one is very mysterious and I don't know where Anna found it. Uh, next we that have- one was, That one was shared in our WhatsApp group as one of those unusual and actually rare covers. Cause I think this is one yeah. of the, if not first edition, I think second edition right before the movie came out. So it didn't really have a long publication run. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, uh, then we have Bulgaria. And it's funny, uh, I think, because they look like, um, if, you did, if you didn't tell me that is good romance, I thought, I can thought that is um, Sherlock Holmes and Watson. And with, with a strange uh, warlock in, in the bottom left. <laughs> and uh, then we have one from Serbia that is really interesting because um, I, think, I, I think that is the first time I see in the modern, time, modern times, uh, the name of the authors uh, changed to a phonetic spell, uh, to a phonetic uh, um, spelling. And it's funny. Uh, it's happened another time. Next slide. Okay, no, no this is why, okay. Uh, for next, this is the Japanese and the another Russian version. First, I'm going to the uh, to the Russian because uh, just for a fun fact, uh, when I see this one, uh, I I thought, oh, oh my God, doesn't look Russian at all with the macaroons and all these pastel colors. So I asked to an, a Russian friend that is inside fandom, and they say it doesn't look look like Russian at all. And it's very strange is um, a choice uh, of uh, style, very particular. And the person was surprised it itself. And about the Japanese um, version of the book, there is Tifa that can talk about it uh, more, uh, uh, more profoundly. So um, yeah, these are the covers for the um, for the Japanese version. So um, so like Good Omens is like around three hundred something pages or four hundred something pages, which is a pretty normal length for a novel in English. But um, translated to Japanese, um, considering the size of novels here, which are pretty small, pocket size, uh, really compact, um, it. Um, if the Good Omens novel weren't split into two volumes, it would have been too thick. So um, these aren't alternate covers. These um, these together um, make up the entire Good Omens novel, just split into um, two volumes. So yeah, um, yeah, that's it for the um, for the Japanese cover. Okay, so we can go on. Next slide. Okay, so the first one is from Israel and it's uh, translated in Hebrew. I, I, sorry, I don't know the, pronu the pronunciation of this word. And I, I asked for this one as well, and is quite recent, I think. Then we have Latvia, and it's funny because it looks like the, the poster for, um, I don't know, um, young adult. Uh, novel or even a young adult TV show with demon slayers, something like supernatural and things like that. 
And the last one is from Romania. And it's very elegant. I think is Romanian have the most elegant cover uh, of every from from around the world. And of course, we have uh, the original version. Uh, can we go back to the video? No, they can see me. Okay, this is the original version, of course. Original. The this is not the original one, of course. The first one, the first edition, have a completely different cover and is really hard to find. So this is the most one of the most recent recent edition of the English book. Okay, I think that we can go on. Of course, if you have more information that you want to share to us in the chat with other. Um, book covers or uh, different translation, uh, please do. Um, another <clears throat> uh, funny, fun, fun things about the Italian translation is the uh, name of Aziraphel. In original, of course, is Aziraphel. In Italian, we translate it uh, completely in Azrafel. And we do, uh, we, we keep this translation in the TV show as well. So, for Italian people that have read the book, that had read the book in Italian and saw the TV show in Italian, there Azirafel doesn't exist. It's just Azrafel. Even the people that uh, have watched both versions sometimes call him Azrafel as a reminder from their uh, first time they read the book uh, and things like that. Uh, I think. Uh, I think very, um, a very interesting uh, thing that I noted on Twitter is that the Spanish translation is uh, the phonetic spelling of the word. Like Aziraphel is written exact, uh, in the same way you pronounce it. And that would be also the Italian phonetic spelling of the word Aziraphel. So they keep the name and change the spelling into something more easy to read probably. And um, we can go in the next slide. Thank you. Okay. Uh, another difference from the book, the original book and the Italian translation is dog. Uh, English is, uh, for the English, of course, dog is dog. In Italian, the translation of dog is cane. And in the book, uh, the dog is called dog, not cane because maybe they thought that it was too stupid to call uh, a dog, dog. I don't know. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't had the chance to contact the original translator. Uh, another difference uh, with, the, uh, with the, the original book that um, introduced us to uh, uh, some sort of more uh, difficult topic is the uh, lowering the tone in uh, the general romance and uh, I don't remember, uh, uh, well, sorry, <laughs> I lost myself. By the way, in the book, the, um, the description of Aziraphale is, as we know, many people meeting Aziraphale, etc., etc., and uh, in the Italian version, they translated it perfectly. Like yeah, they even found out that the um, nitrous, oh my god, nitrous oxide is the um, uh, it's called gas esilarante. But the translation chose to translate gayer with vivace. So don't uh, they don't use they didn't use the the sub uh, the subtext if you if we can if you want to say it so uh, so it become like is a very happy or joyous person or monkeys in this case and next slide next slide okay so this is mostly uh, this is all about the tv show and about the differences in translation in the tv show and the general sense of lowering the tone about religion and romance uh, of course we have neil yesterday that uh, see that said uh, really very uh, said aloud that is a romantic story and we didn't have the this we we haven't been so lucky in Italy because they changed many things. 
the first thing is the God gender. Uh, they used uh, Italian, uh, the voice of a, uh, of a woman uh, for, the, for the God, of course, but they always use male pronouns uh, when referred to her. Uh, and these things uh, can be, uh, as I written in the slide, can be both uh, because of some kind of bigger tree that of course is very common in Italy uh, because our um, very, uh, Christ very, very deep Christian root. And also because um, we have um, strong veneration of the Holy Mary. So if you refer to a, a super, supernatural ethereal um, Saint character, uh, call you call uh, call that as you prefer. We we think immediately to the only Mary. Not uh, it, it's like a, a, an automatic process in our mind. So maybe it's for that. Maybe it's for bigger three. Be, maybe it's for both. I don't know. Uh, but that is uh, that is. Um, other. Two, uh, three differences are uh, complete. We where we completely lost the subtext or the double sense of the of some lines, like when Mary Lucretia uh, stop the guys uh, um, from in the wolf the wolf scene against the wolf scene. It, she said, "Excuse me, gentlemen. Sorry to interrupt. Instead of sorry to break up an intimate moment, so we we lose uh, a bit of the." The, the joke. Uh, when uh, Crowley um, left Aziraphale on uh, the sidewalks, yelling at him uh, that he, he was leaving and uh, he won't even think about him, uh, the guy that followed uh, the passerby said, uh, "Don't be, don't be upset. You will be better soon." That is kind of double meaning even in Italian, but it's not like saying I've been there, you'd be better without him. Uh, the, the English version imply very much the, uh, the, the, the second subtext. Last one is the uh, one <clears throat> about Uriel and of course he, the boyfriend become the friend in the dark class. So we can uh, go on, I think. Tifa, I think, uh, Tifa, you're on mute, there you go. Oh, okay, I think it's okay now. Um, so yeah, I wanna share some clips from the Japanese dub. So in particular, I wanna focus on um, two scenes that really stood out for me. One, um, this one was really funny. So this is um, how Gabriel um, talks about, you know, wanting to buy pornography in Japanese. So yeah, let's begin. Um, I hope it shows. Okay. Oh. One thing I want to buy is this food. 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 And um, let me fast forward to thank you for my pornography. Um, hold on. Okay, let's get to thank you for my pornography. Okay, there we go. Porno arigato. And another scene is um, the the pun about um, fomenting discord versus um, fermenting discord. So um, in English, um, the pun is that these two words sound similar, but they don't really mean the same thing. So Aziraphale thinks that Crowley is referring to fermenting, but in Japanese, um, I was you know I was wondering how that would hold up. But there's but. It was, the translation was perfect because there is a word in Japanese um, called kamosu, which means both fomenting and fermenting, specifically fermenting sake. So um, so in the scene with the Black Knight, Aziraphale thinks that Crowley is fermenting sake. So hold on, let me, sh let me show. Ah, sorry, sorry. Okay, let me show the scene. It shouldn't take too long. It's just a few seconds. Okay. 
まさか君クロウリーかクロウリーだ一体どういうつもりなんだ大丈夫彼は知り合いだ俺はかもしてるんだよかもしてって酒をか違うかもす調整するって言うだろ反乱の空気を朝王のせいで Okay, so Kamosu, as in、um, fomenting Discord, but then Aziraphale thinks that,、um, that Crowley's been be- busy fermenting alcohol. So, yeah,、um, that's it.、Um, so,、uh, we can go on to the next part, which,、um, which would be memes in our、um, own languages. Okay,、um, some, someone in chat、uh, puts me out that there is no joke, of course, for ciao in Italian version, there is au revoir. And also say it, it means wine.、Uh, I always forget that because, of course, <laughs> for me, ciao. Okay, meme always works.、Uh, this is a very common meme. So sorry, no memes. Memes always work.、Uh, um, uh, we create memes in all languages, and it's funny because sometimes the,、uh, the jokes work s both ways. So we can go on very fast. I use this one because we talk about this in.、Uh, Uh, before we can go on, we already.、Uh, these are our mem- memes about the quarantine.、Um, I made with my friends as,、uh, like 100 memes about the quarantine to、uh, in- let people have something to laugh about during the, the lockdown. And we can go on. And this one is inspired from,、uh, I think, common. Experience from all over the world when your mom, your some of your of the people are of the older people in your house uh, uh, try to make you watch video with scams and fake news. Go on, okay. This one is funny. I、uh, try to get through very quickly. Is、uh, when we try to adapt the、uh, the memes in our Ita-、uh, our the regional dialect and. Uh, my, my original dialect is the Roman. I'm from Rome. And、uh, my di- uh, the original, original dialect,、uh, Roman dialect, is very、um, kind of rude.、Um, we are very, it comes very from the guts when we talk. And、uh, so we try to、um, give the same vibes. And the difference is, is the, in English, you say hands off. And it's like, okay, hands off. And in Italian,、uh, the translation said it will be、um, remove your hands or togli quella mano, remove your hands. In my original di- dialect, is leva gua mano. I don't know if you can、um, listen to the tone, it's different. We, we have this like, way to say things that it's kind of do it or I, I will kill you. Next one. Okay, this is of course is,、uh, all around the world.、Uh, preparing for going for groceries is like this. With,、uh, this one is,、uh, we use this one to, for the vibes. Uh, uh, we thought that the Crowley vibes, when、uh, the Oishem Crowley vibes were very close to、uh, some of the Italian mayor that during the lockdown makes speeches, official speeches. Where they literally insult people to tell them to go back in their houses. And it's funny, you can find all these memes、uh, at the end of this panel in a video or、uh, in our fa- Facebook page. So we can go on. And this one is uh, 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 from Hannah. So please. Actually, I think Tifa, you might be in a better position、okay. to talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so、um, yeah, last year,、um, the Good Omens fandom in the Philippines was really active.、Um, now it's just a handful of us that are like, really active. But um, yeah, um, some of us got the idea to make、um, Tagalog omens, Tagalog being the、um, national language of the Philippines, well, Filipino.、Um, so yeah,、um, basically, these are like pop culture references, like, um, like um, song lyrics or like this,、um, this game show host that,、um, that loves to give out jackets. And we just thought, you know, It would be perfect for Crowley. And then, next slide, please.、Um, yeah, just、um, basically、um, translating some scenes to Tagalog or thirsting over the characters in Tagalog because, like, because、um, 
there's just something about cussing in your own language that you know it just I don't know it just sounds a lot more raw when you're doing it in your own language and someone got the idea of translating um, the archangel fucking Gabriel to Tagalog which would be uh, ako si Gabriel ang punyetang arkangel so yeah um that's it for Tagalog omens and then next um next slide would be um japanese memes so um japan actually doesn't do memes much like um i know the concept of memes is kind of hard to explain in english but i think it's even harder to explain it um uh when you know when the country itself doesn't really do memes much but last year some people were imagining how um gabriel might say thank you in um like what what the characters would say if they were using the osaka dialect um And another standout um, meme is the Mirishira um, meme. So basically, it's a template. So without knowing what the source material is about, what do you think the characters' names and personalities would be? So I didn't bother translating all of um, everything because um, I didn't have time. But some standout ones, like someone, like this person who filled, filled this out, thought that Gabriel was named Georgia and <laughs> that um, his personality was, you know, sexy, person in charge, pervert. And then, um, wait, oh yeah, Shadwell was Mr. Salami. Um, Madam Tracy was Fallen Angel Susan. And um, and Nani Ashtoreth, uh, Crowley's mom. So yeah, um, that's it for memes. Okay, so this is just a question we want to ask you. And uh, where did you make connection with people from other countries? So Facebook, Tumble, Twitter, Instagram, Archive of Our Own, or mysterious places you have to share with us because I don't know any other social where you can meet people. It's easier. So if you want to tell us in chat, please. And uh, <clears throat> personally, I meet pers the, most of the people on groups on Facebook. There is two big international group groups of about the good omens in uh, on on facebook one is good omen the ineffable husbands and the other one is ineffable husbands and uh, i made a very uh, strong friendship uh, strong um, i sorry i uh, made a very strong friendship i don't know if this is this is uh, right on archive our own with a, a writer And it's funny because uh, I didn't read a single fan fiction for the past 16 years, 16 years. And I start to read fan fiction again with Good Omens and I make a friend, so it's fantastic. And we can go on. Or uh, sorry, Anna and Tifa, do you want to share us how you met people mostly, mostly met people? Uh, Anna, you are muted. Actually, okay. that's the, the next bit that I want to talk about and that even though we're coming from many countries, it's really just one fandom. And a lot of that, this is probably the difficult part with trying to schedule uh, online meetups or anything, is the time zones. So for example, I think in the start of this panel, we kind of just sounded out in the comments, uh, guys, what time is it over there? So I was also sharing that when we were all taking the quiz yesterday, it was five in the morning. I have not had coffee. So I am attributing that to why I didn't do well in the quiz. <laughs> But the other thing that I wanted to share is currently, uh, I think I joined in about uh, April or May of this year. There was actually a WhatsApp group that was formed and I kind of just went through the people who were there in the chat and just in like that small group. It's not even a very big group yet. We're only about, I think, 20 participants. But the it's like a mini united nations in there that we come from different countries and we're always sharing you know we i uh, we tend to just share like photos about the fandom new fan art or fanfic that we're reading etc but it being an international uh whatsapp group sometimes things like this happen where for example someone sends over a meme and it's in english And then the subsequent comments will suddenly have people breaking into their native language. Like uh, I deleted the names here for privacy, but our Brazilian uh, group members will often sound out in the in the WhatsApp group of how they would translate that into their language. And another thing that we did, which I honestly really enjoyed, was uh, we tried reading out loud the book to each other. So either reading it in English, and you know, not even attempting to hide our accents because that's really just part of it and trying to read it in our native languages. So some of us had book translations to read from. 
others like me in the Philippines, we don't have an official Filipino translation. So we were just translating it on the fly. So I just want to share um, some of the recordings that we did because even like trying to hear and understand how to tr pronounce the names of the characters was really fun. Gabriel is Gabriel mesmo. Zirafel is Zirafel. Crowley is Crowley. Шутка говорю. Не очень-то удалась, ответил змей. А, ну да, кивнул ангел, которого звали Азерафей. Как по мне, так он малость переборщил, продолжал змей. Это ведь их первый привод, а раньше они ничего такого. И вообще, что плохого в том, чтобы познать различия между добром и злом? Let's have lunch, he said. I owe you one from when was it? Paris, 1793, said Azirafel. Oh, yes, the reign of terror. Was that one of yours or one of ours? Wasn't it yours? Can't recall. It was quite a good restaurant, though. Ayun naman eh, sabi niya. Lahat ng mga hayop, malaki at maliit. Marami sa kanila may utak, tapos bazam. Pero kasama ka dun eh, sabi ni Aziraphale. Tinutokso mo ang tao. Magaling ka dun. Binagsak ni Crowley ang kanyang baso sa lamesa. So those are just some of the clips that we did. And it was always, uh, while yes, sometimes language is a barrier for us to try to understand one another, uh, part of the joy of being an international fandom is it also gives us opportunity to learn about each other. So this is also me shameless plugging that if you guys want to join in the fun, uh, let us know in the chat and we'll definitely send out a, you know, a, a, an invite to the WhatsApp group. Yeah, Tifa, go ahead. I'm on mute. Okay. Okay, so um, another thing is, you know, localizing the Good Omens characters, like imagining what um, what they would be like if they visited your own country. Um, so um, in the Philippines, we um, so um, we had this zine called It's More Wahoo in the Philippines. So, you know, imagining um, what, um, let's say, what if, you know, Aziraphale and Crowley visited the Philippines. So um, some art that I can share. Um, let's see. The them, um, the them and the husbands having ah, why is it not showing? Okay, this one's this one's perfect for Halloween, and then um, hold on, um, where was it? Um, ah, uh, the husbands in um Barong Tagalog, which is um which is the national um attire for men in the Philippines, although some women um do wear it, like um like what Anna's wearing now. Yes, this um, is my this is our national costume, and this particular one, just shout out the embroidery on it is angel wings and leaves. So very appropriate for this panel. Hmm. Go ahead, Tita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um and then like um like here in japan someone tried to think of some meaningful kanji um chinese characters used in japanese readings for um aziraphale and crowley's names because um because japanese um for japanese um instead of using kanji characters for the character names it's um translators use um phonetic readings and then next slide please um so yeah, um, there's also imagining um, the characters in different countries' traditional attire. So let's say um, um, those um, pages from the zine that I just shared, and then um, and then an Indonesian friend of mine did some fan art of um, Aziraphale and Crowley um, in Indonesian attire, and she also did one of them um, um, wearing wearing Tang Dynasty China attire. Um, and then next um, next slide, please. Um, so the next slide would be, uh, I mean, next is, um, yeah, cosplay. Um, so uh, it's basically what Anna and I are doing now. So I've done a few um, Good Omens cosplays. Um, so there's Nani Ashtoreth in, a, um, in Chinese attire because um, I'm Chinese Filipino. Um, I, um, I'm not Japanese at I'm not Japanese. I'm not ethnic. I have no Japanese ethnicity, but I am interested in kimono culture. So I've done some kimono cosplays. Um, and also um, kimono coordinates are a thing. So like, um, like I found about I found out about this um, when I attended Tokyo Comic Con and saw that some people would um, would basically put together kimono pieces, um, not that not necessarily cosplaying the characters per se, but incorporating uh, the motifs and the colors of their favorite characters. 
Um, so there, there was this one tweet that went viral of this lady who did a Captain America inspired um, kimono coordinate. And I did that um, at Tokyo Comic Con last year. And now I'm cosplaying a, a female presenting Crowley in a kimono. Like um, you can see some unicorns on the collar, the Han Eri. And also, um, there's also some cos um, some people like Anna have done cosplays of the characters in Filipiniana attire. So yeah, and in addition to that, apart from of course attire, part of it is also localizing it and perhaps even the practices of the country. So in the pictures that I put here, actually these are distinctly Filipino or at least Hispanic activities, like the idea of Crowley serenading Aziraphale with a song. This is called Harana in Philippines. And that is how a suitor woos his lady. And that is traditionally what they wear during that event. And then in the lower portion, because I am a Filipino martial arts instructor myself, uh, that is traditional Filipino weaponry. And this is normally the kind of thing that you would wear to war. In fact, I brought this is a traditional Filipino blade that I thought was perfect for good omens because the scabbard is in leaves, but the sheath, uh, the hilt, actually, this is the bakunawa which is a serpent god in the Philippines. So it just matched so well with how I imagined if good omens took place in my culture. Um, and, um, and also um, some Japanese artists um, regularly do some hashtag prompts or projects. So um, for example, there was Ineffable Husband's local tour or Tenchi to Akuma no Gotochi Meguri, which is like imagining um, what it would be like if Aziraphale and Crowley visited your country, like where would they go? Uh, I'm not an artist, like I can't really draw. So um, I, I, I take I take some of my, I, I mean, I take my ineffable husband's plushies whenever I travel. So I shared some photos. And then there's also um, covers um, underscore GO. Um, check out that hashtag because that's, that's this, it's this really cool project, like fan art of, of the different covers. So if you like the Latvian cover, um, the Japanese artists seem to like um, that cover too. Um, you can find um, lots of cool art if you search that hashtag. And then there's also netprint underscore good omens, which, um, which is a really cool project because here in Japan, um, convenience stores are literally convenient. So um, you can print stuff at convenience stores and um, it, it works, uh, it's, it's really easy. Like um, basically you can upload stuff to a server called netprint and then um, netprint will assign, um, will assign the document a certain um, alphanumeric code. And when you go to a convenience store printer, all you have to do is enter the code to print it. So um, some ja since last year, some Japanese artists have been basically giving free art to people. So instead of, um, you know, doing the prints, uh, handling the printing themselves and um, charging a markup, all you have to do is go to a convenience store, enter the alphanumeric code, um, pay for printing, which is usually like, it, it's really cheap. Um, I'll try to think of the conversion rate later. But yeah, um, just print and that's it. So some examples of the free, um, of the stuff that I've gotten um, thanks to Netprint. Um, so this one, this is really beautiful. It makes my heart melt. Um, and then this, yeah, this one, um, what else? Um, this one, and then there are some really cool ones, not just like postcard sized and um, postcard sized prints or photo prints, like um, there's this one, um, cutouts, um, uh, it's not showing, um, okay, never mind. Um, oh, another example, um, stickers. Um, I printed them as um, as a photo print because I didn't want to bother with um, with cutting them. But you can actually print. You could you could have actually printed this as a sticker um, um, at a Japanese convenience store and just cut them and and voila, instant stickers. So yeah, um, that's it um, for this part. So next we go to um, fandom care and free expression. Anna, I think you're on mute. Actually, I just wanted to go over this really quickly because this is something that I thought was okay. It's not it's not unusual to fandoms to support each other and to support charitable causes. But what I found particularly unique with Good Omen, so shout out here to Fu Pestilence because this is literally Good Omens fans just helping out good other Good Omens fans. It's 
uh, basically it's a it's a fundraising and if you contact the organizers and let them know that because of this pandemic you've been affected they will actually come up uh, try to help you and literally like I, I looked through the application and it's just are you a fan of good omens I'm a fan too let me help you I heard you're going through a bad time and this is something that I think is really um you know it's a manifestation of how caring this fandom can be and this one is not hindered by by borders either because usually you do have charities that are specific to local areas or at least when you send over the money it's not always to the international portion but in the setup of this uh, little demonic miracle fund um it's really something that's just because you're a good omens fan and we care about each other this is something that we will do to help keep each other afloat during the during the pandemic No, we have to go fast now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go. <laughs> local, local event pro and projects. We are going very, very fast. So next slide. This is the uh, fantastic uh, retreat Neil Gaiman made of our picture in takes in Luca for the last uh, meeting we had uh, 50 people and uh, you can see that he shared our most embarrassing tweet because I was talking about the ass of the guy who was taking the picture. But who cares? I mean, I'm very um, like I'm present myself like a very chaotic Crowley, so it fits. Next, uh, you can go through. Okay, picture of the same events, same events. Go on, go on, go on. Okay, this is this uh, scenography we made for uh, another convention in Rome, and you can find this picture in a booth inside the con and you can use it to photoshop yourself inside or send me picture to photoshop you in the pictures okay next this is how we made the the damn wings one by one uh, okay people at the con go on people at the con in the next one okay okay this is uh international events we tried to create it didn't go very well but it was funny it's what for it's what for what for the 30th anniversary and we try to remake um, uh, a sort of parallel from the TV show and the cosplayer uh, picture. If you want to do that, uh, you can still send me picture and I will edit the video with the original and your picture. Go on. Okay, this is from, for, from Tifa or Anna, no, Tifa. Yeah, go ahead, um, Tifa. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, um, so I'm actually one of, um, one of the mods of a fandom community, uh, of a Good Omens community in the Philippines called Ineffable Manila, which was formed really um, serendipitously because um, basically we had our first meetup, um, which is actually the next slide, I think. Um, we had our first, no, okay, I don't know where that, where that slide went, but okay, um, okay, that one there okay so we um so basically i was visiting the philippines last year i was hoping to do good omens cosplays at a con meet fellow cosplayers but that con got canceled so um we were like what if we have a meetup and that's um and um uh, one thing led to another we thought it would just be a one-off thing but um it's not um we're yeah we managed to hold we went on to hold a few more meetups um so yeah and then um next slide please um oh uh, okay, so, um, and then here in Tokyo, um, so I organized a meetup at Tokyo Comic Con and we got some really cool pictures. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, um, yeah, like I said, um, some really cool pictures. Um, next slide. And um, and these are from the meetup at Comic -Ed, um, Comic Market. So it's one of the world's biggest fan conventions. So we had a Good Omens meetup um, last year, which was around December. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, more photos. And um, next slide. Oh, okay, uh, that's, yeah, that's We've it. Done. Mm. Okay, yes. I guess, uh, now would be the time for us to actually answer some of the questions that came in. So go okay. on. All right. So I think I'll try to answer the first question is, do you find it hard to make friendships with people of the fandom in other countries? Uh, 
considering this came from Brazil, I'm surprised because a large number of the people that I talked to in the WhatsApp group are from Brazil and it has been very warm. Um, I guess it just depends. I guess the first part is just making that first step, the whole uh, coming over, you know, being able to step up and introduce yourself and say, hey, I like Good Omens too. Do you want to talk about it? That bit can be a bit awkward. But once you get past that first step, it's a lot faster. Okay. Um, does anyone want to take on question two? Okay, to add the second question. Uh, in Italian, there is no particular uh, translation from the bandstand scene and about the other translation, I'll already talk about it. So I think we already answered that. Ifa, I think you said that there are currently questions going on in the, okay. in the chat. So go ahead, yeah. you can take on this. Um, okay, um, uh, let's see. Um, Oh, um, what do you think a zero fails Filipino dessert would be? Um, <laughs> this is a hard question, but I think... I would say be I would say bibinka. Okay, it's very it's very easy to eat, and you can get it anywhere. It's either bibinka or halo halo because you would overload it with everything. <laughs> and, um, why we answer the question? Question: Can you switch to the last uh, the last oh. one? So at least the people can read it. Why we? Talk? Oh sure. These okay. are like I guess little helpful tips and tricks for interacting in an international fandom. But you guys at the con right now have been doing such a great job already of it. So these are. Go with Sabrina. the questions. Ah, okay. Oh, just um, real quick about Azira Fail's favorite dessert. I would say um, Enzymada goes well with um, with hot chocolate. So yeah. Next question. Um, this one's for all of us. Like, which version of the book do you enjoy the most? Um, I've only read the book in English. I um, I am aiming to read it in Japanese. So um, yeah. I don't know. Um, I guess I'll find out eventually how the I, Japanese translation holds up. I read both, and they're quite similar. Uh, there is no official Filipino translation. So hmm. I'm currently trying to write one, uh, but in the general, I've only read it in English and a little bit of the Spanish. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't know if we have time for, for the others. Um, Sabrina, um, I um, I copy pasted. There's this, que there's one question for you. It's oh, language. Okay, sorry. I, 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 Okay. Uh, and honestly, first time I that I read the book, I didn't get a hint of being uh, the, the gay uh, the gay vibes. Uh, if I have to be honest, and um, I think the this is one of the things that get lost in the Italian translation, and it's not unusual. So. That's it. But I re I read the book like five years ago, six no more, seven years ago in in Italian. I don't remember very well it in Italian, and I haven't had the chance to check it because I moved recently, and all my books are mostly or of all my books are in boxes. So. Okay. Also, to answer a question coming in from Edna, did Good Omens fandom become a safe space for queer people in your country too? So in, uh, in my end in the Philippines, yes, uh, a lot of people in that group felt more comfortable uh, talking about their identity and how they are navigating uh, the, current the current situation of being queer. Because at least in Asia, there, uh, there's varying levels of acceptance. But yes, within the fandom, we found it was a little bit easy, uh, more open and accepting to this, ki to this kind of uh, setup of just being open with our gender and sexuality. And apparently we have two minutes left. Woo. Okay. <laughs> there's, so. a, uh, there's a quick question for Anna. Like, um, mm. some, uh, someone's asking about joining the WhatsApp group. Yes, yes, you can. Please, uh, please feel, to feel free to message me and <laughs> we'll send over the, the link to the WhatsApp group. We would love to have all of you there. Um, um, yeah. Last question. Let's see if we can we can answer this in two minutes. So, um, in your opinion, what's the biggest difference in how um, different countries approach fandom? Maybe let's just give like short one-liners. I think I think that. Yeah, go ahead, be. Tifa. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still thinking. Actually, sorry. Can okay. someone else go first? Okay. 
uh, over here in the Philippines, uh, fandom is generally seen, it's still really seen as a hobby. Very rarely do you see writers or artists who do fandom become, you know, work at it professionally. But the, we are trying to uh, continue to promote spaces for it. We do have the occasional conventions where uh, fans can come and meet their work. But very often, it's usually restricted to each specific fandom. Uh, back then, I was part of something called the New Worlds Alliance, which had all kinds of fandoms coming together for three days. But that doesn't really happen so much anymore. So in general, fandom is still viewed as a hobby, mostly in the in our country. Yeah. Sabrina. Agree with me. Or, yeah. No, no, go. Uh, just real quick. Um, I agree with Anna regarding the Philippines. Um, Japan, um, fan culture has been thriving for a while now. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I think Japan's um like fan culture has been pretty strong for um for the longest for for a while. So yeah. Um, okay, Sabrina? I think I think we can keep talking and answering questions in the chat if we want. And the time is over, so Thank you. I think <laughs> I'll say goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, well, we finished.